Welcome to 30 Days of Choose Joy video devotionals. I'm eager to spend the next month with you as we talk honestly about joy. Speaking of honesty, I have to tell you that finding joy is a challenge for me. I'm not naturally an up person, I'm much more of a melancholy. In fact, I've really struggled with low-level depression as far back as I can remember. Even as a little girl, I felt the weight of the world on my shoulders. So I'm not talking about joy from the perspective of one of those happy, peppy people who never has a down day. Some days, I am thrilled to just survive. And it's really because of my own inability to live with joy that I began to study and explore why my experiences didn't match up with Scripture. And I quickly realized that part of the problem was the definition for joy that I had in my head. I thought that joy is feeling good all the time. Well, that's impossible. I mean, truly. Even for those of you who are more naturally upbeat and optimistic? Well, so if my definition wasn't accurate, there was no way I could experience joy. You and I have to start someplace much more realistic, much more true to Scripture, and more attainable by all of us. A few years ago, I read a quote that said, Joy was knowing that God is in control of our lives. And I liked it, but I wanted more. I needed to put some more words around it to give it the complete picture. So here's what I've come up with from studying Scripture. Joy is the settled assurance that God is in control of all the details of my life. The quiet confidence that ultimately everything is going to be all right. And the determined choice to praise God in every situation. I don't know if you noticed it, but there's nothing in that definition about happy feelings. Because as we all know, happiness is fleeting and temporary and unstable. You know, sometimes we think our lives are like hills and valleys with ups and downs, but it's really more like these train tracks. Every day of your life, there are great things that happen. Produce joy, satisfaction. Every day of your life, something bad happens. There's sorrow at the same time. These two tracks run parallel all the way through our lives. So on any given day when you're in the middle of a great experience and you think this is the best thing that's ever happened to me, there's also this little sense that there's also something in it that's not perfect. And in the middle of some of the most terrible things that ever happened to you, there's also a dim awareness that there's still beauty in, in this life to be found. And that's the way it's gonna be your entire life. These two tracks are inseparable. So we think what we should do is try to stay on the joy side of the tracks and avoid the sorrow side of the tracks to the best of our ability. But the fact is we can't do that. But here's where I wanna give you some hope. If you stand on a train tracks and you look all the way down, at some point at the horizon, the train tracks stop being two tracks and they become one. And the brightness of the horizon, the two become one. And that's exactly how it's gonna be in our lives someday. The day that you and I meet Jesus Christ face to face, the joy and the sorrow are gonna to come together in the brightness of His presence and the sorrow will disappear and only the joy will remain. Until then, we're gonna live with both joy and sorrow.